So today we're going to talk about a chocha. And this is a South American gourd. Now I think quite a few people have tried growing this plant. Um, probably because it looks a bit interesting, it's a little bit kooky looking. Um, and then they've probably never grown it again because I think a lot of people don't really know how to make the most out of this. It's not, shall we say, the most obviously delicious plant. It's not like a tomato where, you know, you pick one off the vine and you taste it and it's just amazing and you want more. This isn't gonna do that. But that doesn't mean it isn't worth growing and it isn't a really useful plant. For us on the homestead, aiming to be self-sufficient, as you can see, this is produced in massive quantities and it's pretty easy as well to produce. It kind of takes care of itself once you've planted it. So you usually tend to find two different types of achocha available. You've got this one, which is probably the most common. So this is often called fat baby achocha. So it's little and it looks really super spiny, but it's actually not. These spines are really soft, so it's not as dangerous as it looks. And then you have this one. So this is a giant Bolivian achocha. And as you can see, it lives up to its name. Now I found that these ones are quite slow to produce fruit. So I had a lot being produced by the fat baby vine long before anything happened here. But in the end, I would say that the giant one turned out to be the more productive. So why is this worth growing? How, how can people use this plant? Well, it's grown in South America a lot and there traditionally it's used as a vessel for a stuffing so it's like a stuffed pepper type thing uh, but there are other things to do with it uh, the other one we can do is we're going to rub it in oil and roast it almost like roasted pepper it's kind of got that almost that taste to it anyway isn't it yeah um, and we are also going to pickle some I'm going to do a sweet pickle and we're going to take the smaller ones and we can pickle them intact and the bigger ones we have to open up and take out these these seeds. So I think finding a way to make this useful is about turning into, should we say, a store cupboard staple. And so rather than thinking about it as a gourd, think about it when young as a cucumber, I'd say, because that's probably the closest flavour it's got. Uh, and it's very similar in texture and very similar in use. And when it's older, think about it like a green pepper. So think about there being two different times or stages to harvest this at. So you can let it get fully mature and you can stuff it or you can roast it, think about it like a green pepper, but you can pick them when they are very, very immature. Now the benefit of this is when they get fully mature, they are filled with hard black seeds. If you pick them when they're really, really small, there's no seeds in there. So that's where you can start to think about them more like a cucumber type alternative. And they're much easier to grow than a cucumber, I would say, and in more abundance. Right, so we have already done a recipe um, of when we stuffed these, predominantly with cheese actually, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, but what we want to do today is just show you how you can use it as a staple for the store cupboard. So pretty much preserved so you can use it at a later date in another dish. Sweet pickled achocha. We're gonna treat these a little bit like gherkins actually. So we're gonna do a classic sweet pickle, which is uh, a white wine vinegar, some sugar, up to you what sugar you use. This is like a golden granulated one. Uh, about that much. Doesn't really matter how much you put in, depends how sweet you want the end product to be. And then I've got a, a pickling kind of spice mix here, which is fennel seeds, mustard, celery seed, black pepper, a bit of salt and some cumin. Uh, that's all gonna go in there. And that's gonna be brought to the boil and then poured over these, which will be in the jars. Now 
Now Lucy is just chopping up the bigger achocha and we will be rubbing those with oil, salt and pepper and whacking them in the oven for probably only about 10 minutes at a high heat just to roast. Hey, get on. Got able body disease then. <laughs> Okay, while the pickling liquor is coming to heat, I'm going to fill up the jars, which have been sterilized, with the achocha. Uh, you want to pack them quite tight. Okay, jars are packed. I haven't got quite enough for three, four ones, so this will be the chef's tester. Two. The <coughs> pickling liquor, it just comes to the boil. Let's go turn that off. And now we're going to fill them up. You need to fill the jars to within about two or three mil of the top. So it's important not to get the jars too full up with the achocha because they need to be totally submerged. That looks great. Okay, so I've got two and a half jars there. I am actually going to water bath these ones um, to preserve them because these aren't going to go in the fridge. This one, because it's got a lot of air in, um, I'm not going to keep it out. I'm going to, as soon as it's cooled down, I'm going to put it in the fridge, leave it for a couple of weeks and then we'll eat that one. Um, but for these ones, to be sure that they're not going to ferment or, or spoil, I'm going to water bath them, which will involve me putting them in a saucepan of boiling water with something in the bottom so it's not touching the touching the very bottom of the direct heat. Put a lid over it so I'll boil that for about 15 minutes and that will bring everything in here to 100 degrees C which will kill off any pathogens. It's full of vinegar anyway and sugar which is great at inhibiting and killing organisms like that. So um, that should be sufficient and after that we'll just leave it on the shelf and it'll be good for a, a good amount of time. I have de seeded Wonderful. a load. I'm not going to lie, there's quite a lot more to do, but that should keep you going for a moment. Okay, cool. Right, what we're going to do, we don't want to overcrowd the pan, so I'm going to bung a few in like that. That'll do. My oven is set to 200. It's getting there. It'll be there by the time I finish this. Right, so about that, about that full with the old achocha. Bit of, I think that's rape, that's rapeseed oil. And got some sea salt. Just gonna liberally sprinkle that with the salt. Give it a good old toss over that. You want it all to be coated in the oil, which it pretty much is. I'm gonna put most of them skin side up. Once that starts to heat up and soften, I'll turn it over a few times just so it gets an even bake and um, see how it comes out. Would you mind opening the oven for me? I have oily hands. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. So these have had 20 minutes in the oven at 200. They've gone soft, you can see. Should we have a taste? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's have a taste. Okay. That really is just like green pepper, really. Mm. Maybe with a like, a hint of cucumber, I would say. So we can't can these now, can we? Because they have got oil on. We mm -hmm. can't can anything that is in oil. So we will box these up and they can go in the freezer. But then I guess they're great to add to dishes after this. Yeah, if there's any left anyway. <laughs> Perfect. They're really nice. Yeah. So there you go. That is two ways that you can use a chocha that turns them into more of a store cupboard staple and hopefully it gives you a good reason to justify growing this awesome plant. Thanks so much for watching, hope you've enjoyed the video and that you found it useful. If you've enjoyed it please do subscribe to our channel because it really helps us know that you are enjoying the stuff that we're doing uh, and if you want to see more from us you can find us on Instagram. She Goes Veg and... Making Cooks. Okay, see you soon guys. Bye!